You're listening to Rod and Style Radio, the latest podcast brought to you by RodandStyle.com, which is where you can find links for merch, videos from our YouTube channel, along with stories and tech talk from some of the greatest folks in the culture. So grab the wheel, it's about to get wild. You've tuned in to Rod and Style. Absolutely always adopt anybody that claims Texas, for sure. As long we're, as, as, as long as it, no, wait, no, 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 right? Yeah, we're uh, 80, about 80 miles south on that I-35 uh, from Austin, Texas. We're, we're down in San Antonio. I've been, I've been, yep. nice place. <laughs> so, welcome to Rod and Style Radio. John, uh, uh, thank you for uh, talking with me yesterday about, you know, everything that y'all have got going on and, and agreeing to be on the show with us today. So, we're stoked to uh, to hear about it. So, Motor Mania, when did, when did this get started? Well, believe it or not, this is one of those, uh, have a couple beers and write it down on a napkin. It seemed like a good idea. Oh, I love um, those. So, uh, yeah, that's all the best. You know, you're solving the world's problems with all the boys in the garage. So um, I basically, you know, I'm a, I guess, 80s kid, you know, uh, I'm 47 now. And I, you know, growing up in the late 70s, early 80s with all the great car shows and um, custom car events, World of Wheels, Autorama back in the 80s and seeing all the car culture, everything together from monster trucks, to race car guys to the um, TV show guys, you know, Dukes of Azure, all of it, um, it just kind of disappeared for me over the years. And I just seem like everybody, I guess you can use the word segregated. I'll put that out there that everybody separated their shows. It was custom culture shows. Then it was muscle car shows. Then it was monster trucks separated uh, tuner guys. Like everybody, nobody would hang out with each other anymore. It just seems so weird to me. But, you know, as I grew older and I got nicer cars, then I had, you know, I have four daughters. They're now husbands. They were driving cars and these young guys work for me. They were having tuner cars and they couldn't come to my shows and they couldn't do anything. So I thought, this is really dumb, and I would help everybody organize this. So at about, I think about 2015, I started thinking, of, I want to do a show where I could put it together, and then I could house it all. So I actually launched it in 2019, October of 2019. And I called it Motor Mania, where everybody was welcome. And it's so weird. Everybody kind of bashed me at first. They said, you're absolutely out of your mind. It'll never work. <laughs> and I'm like, That's Why? when it does work. That's that. that well, then I was on a I was on a mission. I'm like, I'm gonna prove you wrong because now you really ticked me off. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> and you know, um, you know, Jess is involved with the show. She's one of my great coordinators here, and obviously my my better half over here. So, and she puts up on all my craziness. And the biggest thing that I wanted to bring to a show is instead of everybody just hanging out. Don't get me wrong. I love going to all the shows and seeing everything and go to Autorama and having all the beers and drinks and food and listen to bands. But I wanted to bring something that would entertain people. So I brought out the burnout pit right away. And that is a 200 by 100 foot long burnout pit where everybody can get crazy in there, do whatever they want. And I had the okay for the show in 2019. And the the fairgrounds who I rent from, uh, on my, my own backyard here, Washington County Fairgrounds, the guy in the town board, I tell everybody the story and I'll, I, it, I'll live, I'll say this the day I die. I had to go in front of the town board with my little pamphlet that was written on a, on a napkin here. And <laughs> like, it was like, I was Kevin Bacon like, asking for a town dance and, <laughs> and footloose because they said one last question. They said, what's a burnout pit? Oh no. And, I, <laughs> and I'm like, and I kind of put my head down. I'm like, Oh, here we go. And I said, and then guy, and you know, a couple of the guys are all suit and ties like, yeah, like a burnout, like you, like you peel out. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. And I'm like, and then I showed him a video of the Australian burnout pit for the, uh, three rod national or the hot rod nationals over there. And they all looked at each other and he said, wait, you want to do this on our fairgrounds? And I said, yeah. <laughs> they, and they looked at me and said, are you out of your mind? <laughs> and I'm like, and then I'm like, okay, well they said, well, we, we can't allow that. And I said, well, then I don't want to have the show here. And it took about a month and they brought it back in. And they said, okay, you know, if you bring your barricades and everything in, we're going to let you try this. We're really scared and we don't know about it, you know? And yeah. I said, okay. So we did it and it started crazy through 2019. We had a crazy following. I have no idea how it all happened. It's somehow I made a commercial of my, I had an IT guy that just made a commercial for Motor Mania. 
everybody loved the name. I came up with the Blower logo. And it was just, like I said, an idea out of my garage here. And I'm not a big promoter. I've helped a lot of people. And next thing you know, somebody called me at SEMA in November, a month after I started this, and said, hey, what is Motor Mania? And I said, what do you mean? And they said, your commercial, that was on Facebook, something that my buddy threw together in his computer, just Motor Mania. It's going to kind of like setting the world on fire like the Superman thing, you know, that he spins around and does it. <laughs> and it says, come see the biggest show of 2020. Oh, shit. <laughs> Somebody, yeah, I was like, what? And it was Saturday night of SEMA, and we're from Wisconsin, so we have the Ring Brothers up here, okay? And he said, the Ring Brothers just won first place for in SEMA, and your commercial for Motor Mania is playing all over SEMA. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> and I'm like and I'm, you know, of course, you're talking to a guy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're full of shit. Okay, right, right. No, no, like, <laughs> and then he went, he did a fa- FaceTime video with me, and he goes, check this out. And everybody's, it was on like 30 TVs all around SEMA. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I don't know who did that, but that's pretty cool. That's awesome. And yeah. And then it kind of got crazy circulation. And a buddy of mine was then down in Miami, not even two weeks later, I think it was, um, for the Miami boat drags. And he saw my commercial and he's like, he goes, hey, I'm going to put this down here. Well, they had this huge Miami boat run and all their crazy expensive million dollar cars. They had it going on their whole block party down there on all their TVs down there. And it just went, it blew my mind. I'm like, this is really cool. And then it just got crazy. I was having full steam ahead. And then, of course, what happens early 2020, we have, you know, that that great C word happened, you know, the great COVID thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shut down. So so what I, I didn't want to back down then because I invested a lot of money into this and kept going. And I was like, okay, what do I do? And literally, I'm sitting in town here at my shop. I've got a little hot rod shop here right in Jackson, Wisconsin. And one of my police chief guys goes by, and he's like, you know, we're supposed to lock the town down at, like, I think it was, what, 8 o'clock? We had a curfew or something, remember, back then? Yep. And and he's like, he goes, they're canceling everything. And I'm like, oh, come on, this is dumb. And he's like, he goes, you know, you ought to do something about it. He goes, you're always, you know, kind of like the rebel without the cause guy. I'm like, what do you want me to do? And he's like, I don't know, why don't you do, like, a cruise or something? I'm like, that'd be kind of cool. So I just put it on, on my social media and I didn't have a big, I didn't have a following, not a lot in 2020. And I put it out there and I said, Hey, does everybody want to meet at the fairgrounds? We'll go do a, um, a first responders cruise to kind of drive by the hospitals and give, you know, all the hospitals and a nurse that are working overtime for this stuff, you know? And I didn't think that many people would show up because they were all supposed to be at home locked down. Right. <laughs> right. And, and if you look on our social media, over 350 cars showed up that day. Wow. And I was a little shocked. I was like, wow, this is, I, I mean, I, I came up with this dumb idea on Monday and I did it on Saturday. I mean, <laughs> so it got, that, that was, I was really shocked. I was like, wow. And so then we did this and then my social, you know, the news channels were all here and my, my phone kept blowing up. They said, Hey, can you please do me a favor and do this for the um, nursing homes and the and assisted livings? Because Everybody had, you know, aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas in those places. They couldn't, they weren't even allow those people out of the room at the time. Yeah. And, and I said, so what do you want me to do? <laughs> I was getting warnings. I, I was literally getting warnings and I had some people calling me, what were they called? Uh, what were they, those, they were calling the events, uh, a super spreader, yeah, super spreader, super spreader <laughs> events. Oh my and God. Like, oh yeah. This is awesome. My first year, I'm going to start my own brand here and I'm getting bashed from some people that I'm calling a super spreader. I'm like, well, you know what? If I'm going to go in, I might as well just go in. I mean, if you're going to get in trouble, go 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 big or go home, right? Absolutely. So, so then I said, okay, let's do this again. So I made the announcement. We're going to put a cruise on, go all the way through my town of Jackson. Jackson Police Department and Washington County Sheriff escorted me through town. And I said, everybody can show up. We'll get there at 9. We'll do the route. Everybody, please stay in their car. Because then it was really serious a month later. You know, everybody really was locked down. Right. And But my sheriff up here, he's like, John, do whatever you want. I'm not going to be a part of it, but I'm not going to stop it either. I, said, okay, <laughs> I love so, it. So if you look on that, if for the Motor Mania, it's called the Lockdown Cruise. And up here, we had our great governor, Tony Evers. So the spoof that I put on my cars, the banners that went across my windshields, was instead of the first ever Lockdown Cruise, I put the first Evers Lockdown Cruise, the last <laughs> name of our governor, on our cars. <laughs> so... A lot of people didn't catch it at first, but then when they did, they're like, they're like, okay, they didn't get, you know, because I had every, you know, political, you know, uh, 
you know, voting, uh, you know, as far as in affiliation. affiliation that's what I'm done. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> I was stumbling on my words there. <laughs> that's what Jess is there for. She cracks my words a lot. So, <laughs> um, so they showed up, and I got a call from the fairgrounds at like five in the morning, and the sheriff's department called me. They're like, "Hey, what time does this cruise start?" I said nine o'clock. He's like, "You've already got twenty or thirty cars here." At like five nice. in the morning, and I went. What? So that went down and made national news all over the place. We had a call from. California, New York. I mean, I did so many interviews that day. We had over 2,000 cars show up in the fairgrounds. And it was packed. We couldn't get any more cars there. Wisconsin, a of, uh, of Wisconsin, the Motorcycle Riders Association, they could not even get their bikes in. And we drove for, what, a, uh, it was a 12-mile block around my town to meet back and go through. By the time we went all the way around the, the fire department, we met. St- we were still meeting cars coming out of the fairgrounds. that went all the way. We that couldn't even get through time. Hadn't even started the the cruise yet. <laughs> yeah, and then it was crazy, and we met over. Um, Abate said over. I said I thought it was over five hundred. He said almost a thousand bikers on the route to go through the assisted living, and we hit every assisted living there was. Um, and it was just it was a great 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 thing, and then we kept pushing it and. You know, every month we kept hearing, this is closed, that's closed, the fairs are closed, the, um, all the concerts were closed down for 2020, and I was really starting to freak out because I had, you know, all this plan, I put a lot of money into Motor Mania the first year, and then out of nowhere, again, I went back to the town board, I think a month, the first Motor Mania was July 3rd and 4th of 2020, I went in June 1st, and they called me in, and I thought, okay, here it goes. They're going to shut me down because they, they shut down the county fairs. I'm sure, I think that was down by you guys, too. They shut down everything in 2020, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. They know that you yeah. had to have, like, uh, basically a permission slip from your work of what you worked because you could get stopped by the police and they can make they can send you home if you didn't have something saying, like, I work here. Like, I'm a, what was it? Essential. Thank you. I was an essential. See, look, he, oh. helps, he helps me, too. But, yeah, like, if you didn't have something saying that you were an essential worker from your job, they would send you home. They would stop you and send you home. Yes, that's, and... So, so up here, it's, you know, we weren't, we were kind of going by the rules, but not really in my, in Washington County up here, you know, it's kind of like a, they were, they were taking it seriously, but not a hundred percent, you know? And so they called me in and I thought, okay, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to get my refund check and, or my deposit check for the fairgrounds and then I'll go. So I go in there and everybody's wearing a mask, sitting six feet apart in this little meeting room. And here I come in, you know, all full of dirt and grime and everything from my shop and <laughs> <laughs> nothing with a bottle of water, no mask, you know, nothing on. And I'm like, so what's up? And she's like, well, they want to see you in the other room. And I'm like, okay. Like, what am I? Let's, I'm like, yeah, now I'm going to get arrested for my cruise. And I mean, this is going to be great. You know? <laughs> I was like, trapped. You know, I'm trapped. I can't get out of the room. I'm like, this. now this sounds, seems like my life, you know. And <laughs> so we go over there and, uh, you know, and we I go in the room and they're like, you know, hey, John, this is so-and-so. I'm like, yeah, I kind of tell it's your face behind your mask, you know, and I'm you know, I'm just kind of giving them a little shit, you know, here and there. And, and um, they're like, what can you do if we let you allow this event? What would you do? And I said, well, I already made these kind of funny stickers, you know, that social distancing. It says stay, stay one, stay one bumper length apart, six feet, you know. And I made these little these little stickers go all the way to the grounds, you know. And I said I had all these extra porta potties here and all these wash stations and just all this stuff. I mean, feeding them anything I could to make this event go on. And they all kind of looked at each other and they said, okay, we'll go out the other room. We'll talk to you. You know, it's like being, you know, on a trial, you know, and I'm like, (laughs) like, all right, I'm I'm waiting outside. I'm waiting outside. You know, I'm like, okay, you know, kind of like, is the kid mine or not? You know, and I'm like, okay, what's going on here? (laughs) 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 And I'm like, like, do I run now or do I just, do do I wait? You know, I'm not sure. But it's, uh, so then I go back in and next thing you know, they said, okay, we voted. Um, It's unanimous across the board, 12 for 12 we're going to let you have motor mania. And I'm like, what? And I like, and I'm like, like I was shocked. And I'm at the same time, I was a little upset. I'm like, well, how am I going to do this now? <laughs> because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, they said, no, you proved in your events, you proved everything else that car people like to, you know, they'll, they're not like going to be hanging on each other, like a rock concert, you know? And, and I'm like, okay. So <laughs> I'm like, let's let it fly then, you know, let it ride. You know, what, what's the worst that could happen now? And, we had everything. We had a, um, anything from the burnout pit, the pinup contest, two stages of bands with uh, both days, Friday and Saturday, and it was just absolutely insane. Friday morning, we did not open the gates up till 
I think nine o'clock to the public and it was July 3rd and at six or 7 a.m. my daughters went to the back gate to open it up and got the cash box out and the lines were double long all the way to the grounds we had over I think Friday we had over 900 cars I think the records were totally I think it was over 900 cars show up on Friday wow on the first day first uh, first premiere year for that motor mania and Saturday over 1500 cars showed up and it was just packed. I think it was a little over 6,000 people. That was my first year out. Oh, my gosh. So that is so wild, man. Yeah, for a first show, I was so blessed for that, you know, and it just, I guess it's good to stay true and never give up, you know? Absolutely. First show, and then to be doing it in the middle of the pandemic where everything was shut down, uh, <laughs> you know, and it's tough to not talk about it. Like, we've been doing a podcast basically since the pandemic started because yep. Sama and I were stuck in a house and we were like, all right, cool. We're essential workers. So, you know, she's a nurse and I work for the government. So yeah, we, we did get out and get to go to work, but everything was closed. I got so to stare we at like, my car in the driveway. I'm like, great. Can't take it nowhere. <laughs> yeah. None of the car shows happened down here. None of the, you know, concerts happened down here. So mm-hmm. like, you know, it was go to work and go home for us for a long time. So, you know, that, you know, basically that's our wedding was postponed. So, yeah, that that sucked. But, yeah, to be <laughs> doing a, a podcast or, you know, and all that, like, that's what we had to go off of because, you know, what else were we going to do? So it helped us out a lot. You know, it got us creating episodes and stuff. But for you to be doing a car show when everything else is shut down and like have that kind of a turnout to it, that is amazing. Absolutely amazing. We were, we were, we were, we were shocked. And the calls that we got from, you know, we had, we, we called to horny Mike and the guys from County cars and we, we, you know, I gave them down payments to come out and then they couldn't leave Vegas even, you know, all my celebrities couldn't. So oh, I no. couldn't. So we had a couple of people just call out of nowhere. Um, Butch Patrick, you know, Eddie Munster. Yep. He mm-hmm. called because I knew him before and he's like, Hey, I'm not scared of this. I'll fly out. And I'm like, really? And he flew out out of nowhere. And then that was really cool. And then we also, cause we couldn't use any of the buildings. We couldn't use ins- our inside show showcases. So the other thing was that, um, the, the other show, I'm not sure if you follow them or not or ever heard them. It's called the street outlaws or Memphis street outlaws. Um, they're they're real big street racers on TV on the History Channel. Okay, and that's they're, they're you know I've followed those guys for years, and a couple of them called and said, "Hey, we're not filming right now. Would you like me to come out to your show?" And I'm like, "Really?" And he's like, "Yeah, we've never even been out to Wisconsin, and they're really big on TV. They got a huge following." And they said, "Yeah, just pay for my fuel. We'd love to come up." Well, I thought it was great to get one of them, and then all of a sudden, all four four of these guys show up from the TV show. So we had four of these Memphis Street Outlaws show up. They're in my burnout pit stuff they'd never done before and it was just one big rock and party and and from then it just it went crazy and i got a phone call from our racetrack up here state fair park it's the milwaukee mile it's one of the, it's the oldest uh quarter mile track i think in the country and it's a great place to do stuff at and they called me everything was shut down and they said hey we'd like you to do an event at our at state fair park i'm like dude that's the middle of milwaukee are you crazy <laughs> i'm like there's no way <laughs> and they're like, nope, we want you to have it. It's not a state. It's a state-owned facility, so you can do it. And they came out, again, their masks on, and rode around in my golf cart and took a tour of Motor Mania when we were doing it. And um, they said, we'd love to have it at State Fair Park. And I thought, and I could do 300-foot drags. I thought, well, this is great, but i got to get a sponsor because, like, I don't know how much I'm going to make on this show, you know, and I'm going to figure, I, I don't know. Right. And a guy came by um, who is now one of my great business partners. Um, uh, he owns an IT company, and he said, "I love what you did with Motor Mania. I want to, I want to always be a part of it. I want to be your backer." And I'm like, "So that was the first year I got a I got a national sponsor, and the fr- I mean the first month I got a sponsor." Um, and I was just I, now I was freaked out that it was going so fast, and that was July, and then I think Labor Day weekend, September. State Fair Park wanted me to put another event on for the middle of the city. And oh it was called God. Motor it, Motor Mania Takes Over the Mile, the Milwaukee Mile. <laughs> and and I'm like, I don't even know how I'm going to pull this one off, but I will. And we set up on Friday. The news stations all came out. Then they, they realized what the burnout pit was about. And 
we did a Fox six news station. We put the, the, the camera crew and everybody in one of our burnout cars and they loved it and did drags with them for the, uh, Friday morning, uh, news station show. And it's got national attention. And then next thing you know, for Saturday, Saturday morning rolls out and the cars were lined up like crazy all the way through the city. Nobody was scared of it, anything. And that I think hits either 16 or 1700 cars. I'm not sure in one day. And we had a dyno guy out there and drags and it just, it just went crazy from there. And next thing you know, we're doing, we got a Roku channel. We got Instagram. We got, I'm like, it, wow. it just went crazy. It just, with our sponsors went crazy and it just, it's been going crazy up here ever since. It's just one thing after the other. Man, that is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you know, it, it's funny how car people, you know, they just want to get involved. You know, they want to do something. They want to get out. They want to have a reason to go out, whether it just be a, a show and shine, you know, bring out your car and park it or go to the pit and burn the tires off of it because you're just made out of money. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, it's like that like people just want to get involved and they want to do things uh, like that like how you're talking about doing the the cruises to the uh to the uh retirement homes and such like car communities just get together on you know and it does not matter what is going on in the world and it does not matter that there's a pandemic going on none of us cared about any of that i know me and sama were sitting here going i wish we could go to a car show right now i wish we could go anywhere right now and being in the middle of san antonio like you know big cities here in texas like everybody was on shutdown you know you get into the rural parts and it was a little bit easier to get around and do things but yeah, you know, we were just sitting here wanting to just do anything. So mm -hmm. now this year, like how everything's kind of started opening up again and things are kind of getting back to normal again, like all of the shows around here are just going like completely nuts. Like everybody, like it's record numbers showing up to car shows down here right now because everybody's just had cabin fever. Oh, it's great. The, the shows are getting bigger and, you know, uh, Jess and I, uh, you know, she, she's doing all the coordinating for everything and, and she's getting, I mean, you're getting a lot of campers and everybody coming in now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's getting more people are coming now for camping and they want to, they want to come and, and camp instead of the show is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're starting to camp on like Monday to see our, cause we got a beautiful kettle Moraine up here. They can go cruises and everything else on. And wow. Uh, it's so it, it, it kind of got, you know, we got more and more involved and in, like you said, the car people, we, I, and that's why I named it motor mania. Cause we loved everything with a motor. That was just so much fun to do. And we don't want to block anybody out. So we, last year we had, you know, Colette was there and we actually had, we actually brought a couple old school monster trucks in from the, and a lot of people don't even know it, but there was a, there was a couple uh there's a place in Indiana, Butler, Indiana. It's called the International Monster Truck Hall of Fame. And all the old monster trucks in the eighties, seventies and eighties, a lot of them are getting restored now and they have them in a hall of fame, like a museum. It's crazy. And I had no idea until about three years ago. And we invited a couple of these guys up and Jess and I went, what, last September to Bigfoot? Mm -hmm. We went to a Bigfoot open house, the original monster truck, of course, in Missouri. Yeah. And I thought, you know, this would be crazy to bring the Motor Mania if we could have a couple old school monster trucks. Just make it look back the way it was in the 80s, the show that I always wanted. And we actually brought four, three, four of them in last year. And the fans and everybody loved it. And we actually put uh, Tim Dempsey and a custom other custom car builders right next to the monster trucks, and they didn't know how to take it at first. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's such a cool guy. I've, yeah, I've followed it, all of his stuff like for the last several years on social media. So like, if we're able to get up to uh, being at your show this year, like he's one of the folks that I'd really like look forward to meeting in person because i've followed him on social media for probably about the last five years <laughs> oh tim is such a fun great guy we um we didn't know how to take everybody when we put them together it's like you know you know uh last year for 2021 everybody kind of showed up and we had you know then all of a sudden danny coker shows up for account 77 we had him play and four of the cast members right all four of them. Mm -hmm. uh kevin mack sean uh, shane the bike builder ryan ryan and horny mike right yep and 
we had all these guys show up and I'm like, okay, we're going to throw this whole mix of garbage together in a show and see what happens if everybody's <laughs> going to like it or not. And they, at first they were kind of, I don't, don't want to say a little standoff, but they were just kind of wondering, you know, like you got Tim Dempsey's car that stands about what, four feet tall, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. top, top feet, and he's parked right behind Showtime monster truck with 73 inch tires in a showroom. And <laughs> it doesn't like, even come halfway up a tire. <laughs> it, no. And it was like, he started looking at it, next thing, you know, He's having a couple of drinks with the monster truck guys. Yeah, by the, by Saturday night, they were all best buddies. Yeah. <laughs> Je, uh, Jess and I took uh, Danny Coker plate, and um, Jess comes up to me, and we're shutting down the show, and we're exhausted. And we had rain, so it was you know, not the best turn up, but we still had fun. And you came up to me, and you're like, yeah, I think all these guys want to go to the bar together. Yep. And, and we have a little bar right in town, and I'm like, okay. So I told everybody, I said, go to the bar. Uh, I said, we'll open up a guy. I told a couple of my guys that go open a, uh, a tab on Motor Mania and we'll go there. Well, of course, everybody's going to show up then, you know. And we have a picture that is great. I'll, I'll have to share with you in the bar where it's got all the custom car, you know, Colette and Tim Dempsey and all of them are there. Then you, they're all in the big crowd, uh, you know, with Motor Mania stuff and uh, next to the Monster Truck guys, next to the Triolo guys, and then Kevin Mack, um, Horny Mike, they're all in this picture together. So all the genres, everything everybody's all together in one picture and i'm like you know what if i didn't have to do another show again right there i'm happy with this right here because i proved everybody this can happen and it will work oh no absolutely man uh i mean that that de definitely sounds amazing and you know there's a lot of folks out there that they feel like you know car shows should be you know one specific thing you know if you're doing a a car show for classics it should just be traditional classics or you know customs it should just be customs but there's a lot <laughs> of uh you know things to be had when you include everybody you know because you know i you know sam and i are both into custom cars Oh, yeah. But, you know, we see that everywhere we go. We, you know, we drive them. We, you know, we go to car shows that are just custom cars and, you know, all of that. But, you know, it's cool when you get to go park, you know, with, you know, folks that you probably would never hang out with ever and see, oh, well, that's rad because I've never had the chance to stand next to a monster truck and, you know, and see the fact that I probably will, you know, would never have a chance to even look inside of one. You know, those kind of shows are rad. So, I Jess, mean. <laughs> Jess has got a good story about a monster truck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> would you like to tell him about this? There's there's a, a, a good, I got to be real good, for, real, good, real good friends with the guy now, Jeff Beekler. He restored a monster truck called High Roller 2. And you know, the opportunities that come when you're at Motor Mania is crazy. So I'll just say he let me drive the monster truck into the burnout pit, and Je Jess will take over here. So <laughs> Yeah, I was on my way to the bathroom, and I get a call from John. He's like, Jess, where are you? We want to get in the monster truck. And I said, okay, so climb up in the monster truck. We do a lap. John jumps out. I'm sitting in the monster truck, so I'm well-versed at what the inside of a monster truck <laughs> looks like. How long? I was in there for almost an hour, and she I'm up there waiting for him. I have to pee. I'm watching John by the burnout pit talking to all a bunch of people eating chicken out of the back of the car, all this stuff. I finally say, screw this. I'm getting out. I hop out. I head toward the bathroom, and he calls me. He panics like, Jess, where are you? We have to get going. Like, you should be here. I'm like, Cause they were dude, out. like, I was just there for an hour, and you left me your stuff in your face with chicken. Come on. And then, the, then all my film guys showed up because that's the other thing with Motor Mania. We're so happy with that. People cover us like the the media coverage is crazy. So all the cameras are on me walking over the truck, and I'm walking over like, you know, make Mr. Big Cool. I'm a monster truck driver, you know. All of a sudden, <laughs> I go open up the door, and she's gone. I'm like, where's where's Jess? <laughs> and she's like, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> so, oh, I'm right so, there with you, Jess. I'm right there with you. Every time Sam is looking for me, I'm probably in the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's we so. We've had so much fun, you know. Jess got on board with this last year a little bit more with me, and now she's in it. She's in it to think of it now. To be fair, I connected with him in January 2020, and I refer to him as Winter John then because we literally watched TV in the winter time in our <laughs> sweatpants, eating chocolate covered peanuts. I had no idea that this car show and this lifestyle was the way it was. I tease him all the time. I'm like, had I known, I would have been gone. I would have been out of here. But now, um, <laughs> lie, it's lie, lie. 
Everybody, it's lies. It's all lies. <laughs> Bait and switch. Um, it's been a journey for sure. <laughs> Bait and switch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. <laughs> I fell for it hook, line, and sinker, but here we are. We have a great time doing it. It's a lot of work, but we couldn't be happier with how everything turns out. And the people that we meet are absolutely amazing. I wouldn't trade them for anything. Oh, no, that that sounds amazing. Like... Ooh. That's pretty much where we where we're at with it, you know. When we started this podcast, you know, we took on the name of the custom couple because you know me and Lane drive our own cars. We both have our own customs that we're working on and stuff like that. But we the support that we've gotten as a couple, and you know me doing the pinup pageants and all that stuff, and him, you know, knowing fucking everybody, <laughs> really. I was on that same I was on that same boat where I was like, oh cool, like we're just hanging out. We have we had our winter time where we just watched movies, we're like slobs at the house, and then when yep. everything started opening back up, it was like, Oh hey Lane, hey Lane, I'm like, who else don't you know here? Like shit. I just wanted to go oh get some popcorn. You got stopped six <laughs> times. Tell her about the followers. Yeah, I live that every day. I know exactly what you're talking about. She 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 goes, if I have to go to another, what was it? Um, we, we went to x uh, Oh, God, the, everywhere we go, somebody knows you. Every, she goes, every, <laughs> somebody knows me. And then she goes, she, what, the more and more it came out, it was, she goes, if I have to hear another person say, I follow you on Facebook. And I, went, <laughs> said, I wish one time, I wish one time someone would walk up to him and said, hey, are you John Bagley? And John would say, yeah, I want someone to go. Oh, I freaking hate your guts! Like I just watched. <laughs> <laughs> we we went we went. <laughs> it's so true. And then so I figured, okay, I'm gonna get back at her for this because she makes gives me shit about it all the time, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna like so every time I would start all my posts. Then from then on, I would just throw her in everything. Her tag her, put her, make posts of her videos of her own stuff. And then all of a sudden, at our last our indoor show that was in March, our spring thaw show. We had a, a guy from the Mustang Club, Gregory Ray, great guy, good friend of mine. And he doesn't even come up to me. He comes up to Jess. You know, you know, don't get me wrong. Jess is, you know, real easy on the eyes. He's nice to look at. He comes, goes right past me after knowing me for 30 years. He's like, Jess. He goes, oh, my gosh, I follow you on Facebook. And I'm like, <laughs> like immediately, you should have saw me do the Jess dance. I'm like, oh, oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, I can't do it. So... Now everybody does it, and I'm like, oh, yeah. And she's just saying, she goes, so many people say hi to me. I don't know who it is. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't stand this. You know, I'm like, <laughs> and she's like, shut up. <laughs> and now, now I created a little monster over here, and people are like, they they all say they follow her on Facebook, and it's it's a lot of fun. And her, she took me to a, what, a bachelor party for your buddies? A yes. uh, the, she took me to a bachelor party for her buddies. I've only met these guys one time. Never really seen them, and they're just good old bunch of country guys up here, and we walked in and <laughs> they zoomed right in on me and they, they went to go say hi to Jess. They haven't seen her in a year. And <laughs> two of their buddies going and was like, Oh my gosh, what are you doing this week? We follow you on Facebook. And she about, she's like, I'm going to kill you. And I'm like, I didn't do it. I'm like, <laughs> so I got, I got suckered there the whole time. So. One guy has a, a pretty hard man crush. It's funny to watch. That's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, Lane has a boyfriend in Dallas. Like, I swear they text and talk so much about cars. Like, they'll be texting until like 10, 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, tell him to go to sleep. Uh-huh. You work. I don't care. <laughs> you work. <laughs> she, I, I have a couple of those. She says there's a, there's a couple of them. There's one of her friends. Uh, uh, we were just at the, matter of fact, we just went to the wedding. And the guy had to come up and tell me that, he sees my shop on Facebook, and he's the, his wife is like, she goes, I'm going to kill him. He wants to put an addition on his shop. He doesn't even he doesn't have a shop. He doesn't do cars. He just wants to have a big shop like yours so he can say he's like you. She goes, oh, he does this talk about you all the time. Every morning. Like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, so when, when Sam met me, she, uh, you know, I, I lived in the neighborhood that I grew up in. So, like, of course, you know, yeah, I go to the grocery store. You're going to know people because, I mean, you've yeah. been in the same neighborhood for 30 years. You know, it, oh, yeah. it just, you know, works out that way. Then we moved to the opposite side of town so I could be closer to work. We mm-hmm. The first time we go to the grocery store, I run into somebody I know. I was so pissed. <laughs> I was so pissed. I was like, we moved to the other side of the damn city, and you still know people. This yeah. is bullshit. <laughs> like, this is stupid. I don't even want to come to the store anymore. Don't ask me. I don't want to. 
<laughs> I feel like that should be a PSA to all women who, yes. you know, have someone who's in the car world. You're going to run into about 8,000 different people and you're not, you're going to be like, you know what? I'll just go do what I need to and I'll come back and you're still going to be here. It's fine. Just, I'm going to go do something. <laughs> A hundred percent, because an hour worth of errands turns into like five with the chatty Kathy I got over. Yep, there exactly. <laughs> she tells me, I'm like, I got to talk to him. I said, you know, and I said, they're my, they're my fans and my followers. I said, I, what am I, I can't be rude. They're going to bash me on Facebook. She's like, oh, whatever. You know, <laughs> and, I'm like, and, and she's so no matter where it is. And she's got. What's your little What's your little click about my shop? As soon as the door opens, he said, "If I go out of town for the weekend, if I'm traveling to another state, she goes. It's like what do you say? Like the aroma. Every time you get back into the vicinity, it's like they smell you coming, and you're getting closer, <laughs> or you throw up a bat signal that you're coming, and John Bagley's coming home, and they come out from the woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wild. Oh, she's yeah, she's got it because they yeah um yeah, and every every time my shop door is open, people like flock to it right away. It's like it's a you know, like there's something to see in what's there is always something to see in there, but they just want to come up and, you know, and talk all the time and visit. And, you know, she had a rummage sale two weeks ago and she wanted to kill everybody that stopped over. Cause I told everybody I was going to help Jess with it. And people want to stop. I've got like a showroom and a bar upstairs and, and people want to stop and talk to me about my, my collection upstairs and have a beer. And I went up there for five minutes and <laughs> it was longer than five minutes. This is great. It was longer than five minutes. It was more like almost a half an hour, and I needed help downstairs, and I damn near kicked the door open. I'm like, is this a party up here, or are we working? It's a work day. <laughs> oh, I, got, I, got, I got scolded for that one, yeah. Yep. And oh, I'm no. Like, All right, guys. You know, but, <laughs> Been but there. The is, <laughs> yeah, but the lifestyle is fun, and we know we're, you know, just like you two, it's doing the social media, and we're doing so many videos, and it's um, partnering up with accounting car guys, and, and next thing you know, we're doing we're doing more and more videos. And um, our backer, you know, got us into doing Motor Mania Media now, so we're doing our own interviews and stuff. I would never thought I'd be doing before. You know, that like you said, it was kind of a pandemic thing. And he owned, you know, he kind of backed me up, and he wanted me to start doing interviews, which was weird to me. But then I did it, um, and then. We went to Autorama, which, you know, everybody's familiar with. It travels the country. And Dale, who runs Autorama, he, uh, that was this last winter. We didn't even have a booth at Autorama in Milwaukee this year, but we helped out the counting car guys and just kind of helped them set up and detail their vehicles and stuff like that. And before you know it, the local radio station here in Milwaukee, the biggest one here in southeast Wisconsin, they came up to me because they're part of Motor Mania now. They said, "Hey, we have nobody to interview. Would you want to get on the air?" I said, oh, "Guys, wow. I'm not even, I'm not even part of the show, <laughs> and they're they're usually broadcast live." So I talked to Dale because you know you're at somebody else's show for Autorama, the biggest one in the country, and they want to interview me for Motor Mania at another show. I thought it would be stepping on somebody's toes, you know? Right, I don't right. Want to, you don't want to get yourself. I don't want to get myself kicked out of the the, the cool guy group before I even really get in, you know? <laughs> and uh, I was really nervous and. Dale's like, no, just go run with it. And so I did the interview. You know, of course, I was talking about Motor Mania, but I was promoting Autorama. And now I was going to Detroit next month, next weekend, and all this other stuff. And they literally came off the air. I put a horny mic back on for him. And he's like, hey, would you do me a favor? And I'm like, sure, what's up? He goes, can you travel to Detroit next month, next weekend, and uh, go interview the Riddler, the Riddler cars and everything for Motor Mania? And I'm like, what? Oh, that's like, awesome. And I took it in for a minute and yeah, it was it was like uh that moment like you don't really it's doesn't doesn't seem real. So the main organizer of Autorama told me to go to auto uh to Detroit and we basically interviewed all the Riddler cars, all the Riddler Award cars, and I was just like blown away. They paid for our hotel rooms, they paid for everything, and I was just like, This is crazy and this is my literally third winter of doing motor mania and it's just it takes off something different happens every every month every year and um it's just getting bigger by the day and it's just it's just crazy it's a wild ride and i love it you know and that is wild uh i've never really uh honestly followed like the riddler awards i know what it is and i've i know a few of the cars that have won it 
but to be like on that level of customization like that's, oh. that's huge that you, you know you got to be able to go in and, uh, and just talk with the you know the guys that you know built those cars and you know to be a part of that I th- like that's absolutely cool like that that's a that's a bucket list right there for me the the bucket list yeah it, you hit it right on the head the bucket list for me in the last two years i don't even know it's like i have to come up with something new because jess and i like the crazy things like you know meeting somebody famous like the three olas or butch patrick and um stuff like that stuff i would only see as a kid and i mean i mean i'm hauling butch patrick's chopper you know to another show for him i'm um it said sat in my showroom at my shop for a month i fixed it for him you know um stuff like that and now we got in with the the bigfoot guys and we went down there nobody i mean bigfoot is like a the, the most famous iconic truck in the world for monster trucks the first one and i you know brought it up to him i gave him the respect and everything and i said he's like you know we don't really take that anywhere except for the shows that we're at and premiering we don't want to just put it in a show somewhere and i said okay and so last year Jess and I went down to the open house at Bigfoot in September and they were great. Like they treated us like family and I'm like, okay, this is cool. I get it. You know? And next thing you know, we get a call from Jim Kramer who we got to be friends with. He's the first iconic Bigfoot driver. He set all the world records, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Hey, you know, the Chandler's Bob and Linda Chandler want to invite you to the Christmas party. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, you're inviting me to the Bigfoot Christmas party. (laughs) You know, it's like, what? (laughs) So Jess and I actually went down last year for the Bigfoot Christmas party as part of Motor Mania. The first time ever they've invited a promoter to one of their shows. And I'm like, you know, Bigfoot's 40-something years old, 47 years old. And I'm like, how the heck am I here? And he's like, he goes, they really like you. And, well, two months ago uh, we had our first indoor show, and they actually brought Bigfoot up to Wisconsin the first time in over 30 years it's been here to my show on Motor Mania. And it's going to be coming back in June for the June Motor Mania show. And now we've got like four of these trucks coming up. It's just, like you said, the bucket list is just insane. You know, we get to drive in these trucks. We get to do all kinds of stuff and meet with these celebrities and hang out. It's just, it's just really amazing. A lot of stuff we get to do. It's just, you know, the bucket list has to keep growing because I don't even know what's going to happen next. <laughs> <laughs> right. You start checking things off the list and it's like, man, I should have I should have reached higher for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, should have added some more stuff on there. <laughs> well, it's it. the funny part of it is it's because like even, you know, um, and I'm sure you've heard of you've heard of Counting Cars, right? With of Dean course. Yeah. 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 We had them come out and. We had them come out. Everybody's seen them at Autorama. Everybody's seen them at all the shows, and the guys are just up on the stage, and they shake hands, and, you know, they might be at SEMA walking around a little bit, but you really can't get near the guys, you know what I'm saying, and hang out with the guys, you know, and, and just really talk with them. And we brought them out to Motor Mania last year, and all four of the guys showed up. Danny showed up, and Horny Mike was just great. Kevin Mack, Shane, Ryan. I did not have them on a stage, which really freaked people out. They, I just let them walk around all day long, I gave them drinks, do whatever, and just let them be part of the crowd. And people were blown away that they were sitting in their cars and do whatever. And they said, no, this is what we like to do. And then we got Horny Mike. I have a truck here, a, a 71 GMC. Um, it's got a full race chassis, you know, like a 600-horse small block. I mean, it, I built it just for my burnout pit. We call it Brownie Burnout because it's patina brown. Mm. And <laughs> we let we let Horny Mike get a ride in there. And a promoter called me from Vegas. He goes, how the heck did you get him in one of your vehicles? They never do any of that. I said, I don't know, man. I just asked. And, <laughs> and that's right. all I did. And before you know it, Horny Mike and Jess got along and everybody's getting along with my crew. And he's like, oh, I could do that. I said, I bet you won't. And before you know it, I had Horny Mike behind the wheel of my burnout truck doing burnouts. I had the videos for it. Oh, it's wow. on my social media. And they had literally so much fun. And, be, you know, after that, I get a call from Danny Coker and Kevin Mack. Kevin Mack and Jess hit it off so good. What do you guys call him? Lollipop. She calls him Lollipop. All right. Uh, <laughs> because Kevin Mack's, you know, the bigger muscle on the show, right? And Jess has got a red, bright red golf cart that says Motor Media. That's hers for the show. And we were bringing the guys back and forth through the fairgrounds to see Danny play. And where's Kevin? Right alongside Jess. She's got Lollipop with her arm around him. <laughs> giving them drinks and motoring around there. And, I mean, 
it, those are things that just never happens to people. And you had told me just three years ago that I'd be hanging out with the county car guys. And, you know, I flew out to Vegas. I did a couple commercials with them already. And, you know, this all happened in the first two years of Motor Mania. It's crazy. And not only are you guys, do you guys work together, but like Horny Mike and John and myself, like we're all actual friends, you know? Yeah, he calls us. He he, he actually FaceTimed us Saturday night with Colette one night. Yeah, he's he's just a real, I mean, well, even last this last Saturday night, we were at a wedding and Horny Mike did our social media, did a great commercial for us. And he said, hey, check it out, see if you like it or not. So we're at the wedding. With matter of fact, the wedding was one of her guys. Yeah. The guy who had a big, you know, we always say he's got a man crush on me. <laughs> and I pulled him aside. I said, hey, I got to call Horny Mike. Do you want to talk to him? And the guy's like, what? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. And we FaceTime Horny Mike from the wedding reception on Saturday night. And the guy about fell over. You know? <laughs> and it was so, yeah, the stuff that I always thought, you know, it, it, everything you learned as a kid, never stop dreaming, never stop believing, and never give up, man, because it's it can happen at any given time. And, I mean, my little shop here in Jackson, I've had monster trucks parked here for the shows. I've had, you know, three LL cars parked here. Uh, Butch Patrick's been here. I mean, I've, it's just crazy. And it, it's just getting bigger by the hour now. We love it. That is absolutely awesome. And it, you know, it, it absolutely comes through uh, just talking with you here that, you know, you have that that same social personality that, you know, that gets you into places like that. Because if you're going to put on, you know, something like that, you got to put yourself out there. And I, I've put on, you know, car shows and benefits and all kinds of stuff down here in Texas. And when you start, you know, getting into talking to people and you, you put off that, you know, that social personality that you're not so standoffish and, you know, it really does open doors where that's where a lot of people fail. Like they, they think that the world owes them something and then they, you know, they don't, you know, they put themselves up on a pedestal or they think that they're above a bunch of people and then their show flops and they wonder why. That or they forget to have fun. It, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that's the you, that's the part right there for sure. You got to have fun with it. You got to be open with it, and you really got to watch. And you know, it, it's it's a shame to even have to say this, but you really have to watch for the the I guess the people that that don't want that want to ride your coattails. You know that that do yeah. stuff and um, oh, absolutely, and, and and steal your ideas. You know. Jess and I always watch that show. I'm, well, I'm sure you do because you're, I wouldn't say it because you're in Texas, but we got into that, you know, the Yellowstone series, mm -hmm. the Yellowstone series. And there were so many great little vibes of that we would watch and say, and it's, it's just so true that you, when you make the, you make something great and people try to take it from you all the time. Mm -hmm. And we, we made something great. I had no idea it was going to be this big. And at first, everybody, I mean, and I mean, I, I've got emails, I've got posts, saved posts that people bash me for my Motor Mania show um, and bringing everybody together. Now I look at shows here, and I don't want to say I'm the guy that started this, but it's like all the shows that I knew that were up here before in, 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 uh, in the Midwest and now even down south, all these shows are collaborating, bringing every, you know, the old trucks are welcome and tuner trucks and, you know, all this stuff. So we're, we're laughing because there's a show up here that, one of the guys used to work with us and he started his own little, uh, own little gig because we didn't really, you know, we didn't like what he was doing with, uh, how he's promoting our show. And he was basically a custom hot rod shop and had the first year he was there, he wanted nothing to do with the young kids and the burnouts and, um, just motorcycles. He's like, that's the dumbest thing ever. And I'm like, okay, fine. We invited him in for free. It was a great guy. And we thought, okay, but he kind of, he went around and tried to steal some ideas, which everybody does. You know, there's no, there's no bigger flattery if somebody tries to steal your ideas, right? So, right, yeah. Um, but then we see a flyer for his show um, that's coming up this summer, and he's got everything on there from, uh, what, what is it called? Lowrider. Yeah, he he wrote everything. Um, there's not, there's only one custom car in the middle. It's a race truck on one side, a diesel truck, a tuner, and we don't want to, we don't want to bash him, but we were laughing so hard about this. Um, he was he wanted to put low riders on there and he put it on the on the uh, on the poster and over social media he spelled low rider low ritter <laughs> so it Jess was the first one to point it she's like she goes what's a low ritter and i'm like oh my gosh and i'm like and then he couldn't get a fairground so it's way out in the middle of nowhere so they wanted me and then of course the best part about it is when they backed then when they when they try to do things for you and then they stab you in the back and they do whatever, 
then one of the guys actually asked me, he's like, John, can you share this on your page? Because you have such a good following. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I, of course, I did it. So I'm on this chat, right? I see this on a page. And I said, sure. I said, it looks like a great show. You know, you got to stay positive because if you don't, you know, it'll just, it, it, they just look for you to, to, to start an argument, you know, or argue back. Of course. So I stay quiet on social media no matter who says what about me. I don't even respond. And it's, it's hard doing it. So all I wrote on this post is I said, and I said, sure, looks like a great show. I said, by the way, what's a low lowrider? <laughs> <laughs> Lasted about 30 seconds, and I got a bunch of PMs, you can imagine. So, you know, and, uh, and one guy's like, why do you hate my show? And I'm trying, I'm like, oh, my gosh, it was a joke, dude. I'm like, <laughs> spell oh, check like, hey. next time. Yeah. Yeah, spell check. Or, spell check. or at least be a part of the culture in the, in the fact that, you know, I'm going to do something that I'm actually into and I'm not just out for a money grab. That's the... 100% preach it! <laughs> <laughs> we get all these people and, you know, there's so many shows. You two have to notice that, I mean, let's just face it, I mean, Motor Mania, of course, I did it because I love the industry. I love, you know, I live and breathe this all the time with everything I do. Um, but I had to turn into a company. Otherwise, I would have just went broke, you know. So I got I got sponsors, and I wanted to make it the best brand there was. And I always say Motor Mania is not a brand. It's a lifestyle, you know. And that's that's my biggest thing. And, and Jess came up with that. And we always say we're making the hobby great again. All these great little um, cliches <laughs> I like that. that we always do. And, <laughs> and we do that fun. We have a lot of fun with it. And then, you know, then we got a couple guys that are like, um, you know, they always wanted to get in for free or bring a whole car club in for free. And I said, guys, I have sponsors now that sponsor me. I can't just give away things for nothing, you know. And next thing you know, I'm getting bashed, you know. And I'm only, I'm, this is only going to be my, this is Motor Mania 3.0. It's only my third, third year. And they're like, oh, yeah, now John's all about the money and doing whatever. And I'm like, guys, I'm like, you know how much what it takes to put these productions on? I mean, social media every single day nonstop every single day we have we have two full-time guys now working for us doing social media that's their full-time job is doing motor media media all day long oh we yeah, yeah. we do that ourselves still and we know that's a full-time job absolutely yep. that or i would come back and be like you want this show to still be here right well then you need to pay just like everybody else to keep this show yeah, alive and, and we do you know, on top of the shows here in Wisconsin, but I travel all across the country to different people's shops and meetings. And we're trying to bring in, we've got a great company up here too, that we're hopefully bringing on this year. We have a meeting with them again tomorrow. Um, he owns a, um, it's like a, uh, detailing a window, um, like a ceramic coat for the cars, but he takes care of a lot of the sports players cars around here and they're into sports and exotics. You know, you're talking McLaren's and Ferraris and all that stuff. And they want to be part of this show also. You know, have a, have a part of the fairgrounds to bring that genre in, too, to show everybody. And I was flattered by this because, um, you know, it, it's just great. And I guess, um, what is that? Um, but I, I guess they were, it, it's just really good to show that everybody wants to be part of it. But long story short is you get these shops. Everybody wants to go to a car show. And they're like, hey, how come so-and-so, um, so-and-so isn't here? This shop isn't here. And I said, do you guys know what it takes to shut down a shop for two or three days and then have the employees work all weekend long, set up a display, sell T-shirts, talk all day long? I said, that is a big undertaking. If the show is a flop or not big enough, you know, they just lost out on two days in shop. You know, they, they could have lost 20 grand to be at our show. It, absolutely. Nobody thinks about the business aspect of what it takes. And look at the cost of fuel right now. And we've got guys bringing cars all the way up. I mean. We have a lot coming from California and Texas by you right now that are coming up and hotel rooms. My gosh, the hotel rooms are crazy right now. You know? I uh, know. Sam and I just went to New York for six days. Yep. And I oh. mean, it was just ridiculous. I mean, food alone, food. You, you got to yeah. eat during the day. And it's like, right. oh my God. Like, you don't think about that when you're, when you're, when you're planning a vacation. You're like, oh, we're going to go on vacation. It's like, oh yeah, six days of eating. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm, 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 I'm in for that. I was, was going to say, Jess and I are totally down for that. You know, yeah. It's a, it's, <laughs> yeah. We, you know, well, you're from Texas. We're from Wisconsin. We both like to eat. I know I've been in Texas several times, you know, so it's, you got to have that. Um, the only but sad thing is I didn't have sweet tea over there. I was pretty fucking depressed. <laughs> <laughs> S 
sweet tea. Oh, really? Yeah, yes. they didn't know. They were like, we have unsweet. I'm like, that's disgusting. How dare you? <laughs> well, the, you know, I, I can't take, it's hard for me to take Jess to any barbecue place, you know, because she has somehow, even though she was down there for eight years, but somehow she has Texas blood in her, I guess, somewhere. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> Mosquito or something. I'm not really sure, but it, she, it you happens. Know, I'm a barbecue and chili snob now. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. You guys yeah. Know what a brat? What's that? You guys know what a brat is? Have you ever had a brat? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like bratwurst. Okay. Yeah, because people down there, like when I lived down there, they're like, a what? And they're like, oh, you must be a yank, aren't you? Well, yeah, but you need to have a brat and cheese curds. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, we curds. have a giant, like, uh, what is it called? It's down on the river walk. We have a giant, like, German festival type thing, and they have all kinds of shit. It's so amazing. Everyone will go down there, and it's like a three day event. I forgot what it's called. Oh, uh, Oktoberfest. There you go. Yeah. Oh, oh we, have we, have, we, have, we have that up here, and, like, you know, we have, I we, we just ordered some stuff, well, we ordered some subs for dinner, and, like, you know, I just asked Jess, I said, do you want fries or cheese curds? She's like, Oh, they got cheese curds there too. She goes, I'm so we had those tonight too. So it's like, you know, it's, you know, we're Wisconsin. So it's like cheese curds, ice cream, you know, you got to have all that good stuff, you know? Oh, of course. Of course. Uh, you know, yeah, we're, we're foodies a little bit. And of course, a lot we, you of know, it, a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, yeah, uh, I get yelled at, I get yelled at for Jess, you know, and you know, it's when, you know, when I first started dating her, she, she only she always gives me this crap about how, you know, she fit into these jeans and do whatever. And I'm like, whatever. You I know. gained 15 pounds dating this guy. That's not a joke. That's real life. <laughs> I, but well, that, doesn't that happen anytime you start dating? Because I know when me and Sam start dating, like all of our dates were like, hey, you want to go eat? It's like, you know, like that. We looked real thin in the beginning. I don't know about now, but we looked real thin and fit in those first pictures. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I I know. I gained I don't, some. I don't do those. Like, oh, look how we looked three years ago. No, never mind. We ain't gonna compare those two pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always, I always tell this story, and she laughs. So she calls me an idiot for telling people this story. But I always tell her. I said, you know, she's like, look at how, look at these. She showed me a pair of jeans, and I said, whose were those? And she goes, you idiot, those are mine when I first started dating you. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, you know, and she's like, and I said, well, I said, you know, I said, hon, I said, you know, I said, you're, you're beautiful. You always will be to me. And I said, I said, you know, I said, I looked at you. I said, you're really skinny because she was across in CrossFit and all that stuff. And I said, you know, I said, I knew you were skinny. I said, but I figured, okay, I can work with that platform. I just got to feed her a little bit, you know, I get some curves on it. And, you know, it's worked out really well. So, it's, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Mine has been Sam's cooking. I mean, she she cooks phenomenal food, and I just don't say no to it. Like you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, the, I, I'm gonna need tonight's dinner and extra for tomorrow's lunch. Pretty so much. everything's doubles. <laughs> yes, yeah. I asked Jess to cook, but she won't do it for me. That's not true. You don't eat it. You're picky. <laughs> I had to say that because she, she always tells me how picky I am. You know, the, I don't really like that. You know, that whole greenery thing. That's not my, uh, my, 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 uh, not really my thing. Like you know. Yes, we know. Oh man, yeah. we'd be best friends then, because I'm just meat and potatoes. That's it. I don't like any <laughs> oh, of that other green so shit on there. You like her cooking. I'm just a small little farm guy from up here. You know, I'm just six one, two sixty. I'm just a little guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. A, no. I'm, it's no. called a, it's called a Wisconsin body. It's what I have. <laughs> He's you know. just a little fella. No, uh, I make yeah. I make fun. Of- <laughs> I make fun of Lane all the time because he'll start like he's just like, you know, I got to eat better, you know, because I'm getting older. I'm like, OK. And like he'll order salads. I'm like, what are you, a rabbit? Like, I'm not going to eat that shit. I'm gonna, I want steak. I want cheese. I want melted cheese. I want pasta. I want everything. I want cornbread, everything. I'll get everything on there. Well, it's so it's funny because like when, you know, I'll, I'll be hanging with Colette or with all that stuff. And, and we're at Detroit Autorama and I'm interviewing the guys downstairs and all the custom car builders. And let's just, you know, I have no idea why, but it seems like a lot in the in in the culture that you guys are going coming in from the rod and custom culture. It seems like there's so many small little dudes that are just covered in tattoos with the skinny jeans and you know the, the, the rockabilly thing, you know. And I'm like, Colette's like, you really need to get into that. I said, they don't make clothes like that that small for me, man. I said, I can't. I just, it don't work. And so I remember, I remember hanging out with Tim Dempsey and. You know, like you said, you didn't get to meet him, but Tim is just a small little dude. It's hilarious, you know. And he was hanging out with me and uh, Brian Kahn. He was one of the ex, uh, the old Bigfoot drivers. 
And Brian Kahn's a big dude too, you know? And Brian Kahn kept putting him underneath his arm, you know, and at the bar and stuff like that. It was so funny. He's like, this is my little buddy. He's like, this, you know, this is and, and Tim kept looking up at us and he's like, he goes, he goes, how did you guys get so big? And I'm like, how did you get, why did you stay so small? Like, why didn't you grow up? He's like, I don't know, man. You know, and he's like, but it's just so funny. You know, so yeah. That sounds like that here. sounds like my buddy Damon. He's a he's a big Iowa boy, and that dude is all fucking stock. That dude's <laughs> huge. Yeah, <laughs> and like you, you get out out somewhere with him, and that that's how he gets. He he'll start putting his arm around you. This is my little buddy right here. You don't even know who they are. <laughs> his little friend. Oh, yeah. from the night. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. So oh, what's all, the all what's the, the date on uh, this year's Motor Mania? All right, so this year's dates for Motor Mania is June 24th, 25th, and 26th. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday show up here in West Bend, Wisconsin, Washington County Fairgrounds. And that's about, for those who are, you know, bullet points, I guess it's about 20 minutes north of Milwaukee. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, Friday, our show kicks off, I believe, at 1 o'clock and it goes till 10. Saturday, we have 10 to 10. And Sunday is 1 to 6. And... You know, just like that, it shows in the description there, we have live bands all weekend long, two stages of bands, and actually now we're even having a third stage in the Automotive Hall of Enchantment, which we can talk based on, but that's now that's Colette and Scratches area over there. That's that's a 25,000-square-foot showcase just for them. Wow. That whole building is. so, um, And that's one thing we're ordering, and, and I guess Motor Mania that's putting us on the map. Every show, When you come to a summer show, everything's outdoor now. You know, and this is 150 acres. So not only are we have the whole entire 150 acres, we're actually bringing in our, we we actually have our whole pavilions rented out too. So we have 50,000 square feet of indoor showcase along with the 150 acres. So it's really branding itself as one of the biggest shows, not only in the Midwest but now the country, because it's nobody else is doing this for some for a summer show. So it's a pretty big event. We've got burnout pits and. We just added 300 foot street drags uh, to the event, which is something else I just figured I'd throw in the mix. But it's a 300 foot street drag where you line up at a green light and uh, we hit the green and you go for 300 feet and race your buddy right on the fairgrounds, right on the asphalt. It's really fun. That is so cool. Is that going to be open to anybody? Like, or is there going to be specifics as to what you would need to be able to do the street drags? No, that's a good question because we're getting a lot of questions across the board. Um, a lot of my buddies did this at Hawkeye Downs and, you know, up here at Madison Speedway. And they had brackets, you know, you go through stock or, or super street stock and open modified and stuff. What we're doing for our Motor Mania show is that it's an open grudge all weekend long. Okay. Where we're just going to we make an announcement and say, hey, the track is now open from 1 to 2. You guys can have open grudge and you just line up against your buddy, line up with whoever, or just race and just go down the track and have a lot of fun and People are in the bleachers watching. They just do a little side bets and have a little fun, and it's just a lot of fun. And then we, from there, we turn it down, and you know, and then they go to the burnout pit. And the the burnout pit last year we started a cash burnout prize, okay, for the best burnout. That's Saturday night. We're gonna have that, and we have we had no idea that it got to be so crazy where people are actually building cars for the best burnout competition, and. It, I, I saw this happening in Australia, and I knew it was coming over here. A couple guys did it down in Florida. So we actually had a guy come up last year from Ohio. His name was Adam Kelly, and just mad respect for what people can build in their garages. He showed up with, I believe it's a uh, 68 Ford F100 short box, totally gutted out, and it had a 582 blown injected big block Chevy with about 2,500 horsepower. Oh, my God. And if you look at my social media and see this truck, he went out there, got in the truck for a test run, and literally grenaded tires. I mean, you're talking basically a pro a pro stock drag drag motor in a in a short box pickup, and this thing is spinning around at 10,000 RPM, grenading the tires, and people are going nuts in the stands. And of course, me as the promoter, you got to do something to keep everybody on their toes. So uh, he's in a fire suit, you know, fully five way harness in, and you know, John over here gets in with his cell phone with t-shirt and a pair of jeans and no harness on and <laughs> i turn i turn my phone on and i go live on facebook and i got inside the truck and i he went nuts in the truck and i, I thought he was just gonna do a little one no he spun around the truck the front of the tire almost lifted off and everything and um 
it was a great it was a great show and i mean now we've got these guys coming in from all over the country trying to get after a three thousand dollar cash prize and it's a lot of fun. It's just, like I said, every year it just gets crazier, and I just keep throwing more things in the mix. That is wild. $3,000 cash prize for best burnout? Yep. It's, wow. It's the biggest one in the country. It's the. I had no idea I was even doing it. I just threw it out there, said, hey, you guys want to get some money together. And um, I know one of the biggest ones uh, is down in Florida. Their top prize, I believe, is 2500 I had no idea. And they called me up and, you know, um, they said, Hey, did you even know what you're doing? I said, no, I just thought it was cool. And I just did it. And next thing you know, I got trucking companies up here wanting to do it. So we actually give 3000 to the first, I think it's 3000 to first place, uh, 1500 to second thousand to, to the third. And we're the only ones in the country that are doing it. And people just, they're building cars specifically for a year to come up to my show to win this prize and get their, get on social media with us now. That is so cool. I mean, that is huge to be able to give out prizes like that. But it also shows like how much y'all have put into the show and and how much y'all are wanting to get out of the show as well. So yeah, putting on big you know big prizes like that. I mean, you you know you said you I you didn't even know you were doing it, and then you got people calling you up and you're like, hey, do you realize you're giving away the biggest prize ever? <laughs> <laughs> That's and so I, cool, man. It, it's so much fun, and we want everybody. We we just love we love the reaction on the faces of the of the not only the grandma and grandpas, you know, guys like us, and you know, guys and gals like us, and the kids are out there now, and they're. I mean, the kids were just a huge part of Motor Mania from day one, and they loved it. They were part of it. You know, we get them out there, and the other thing we did is our is our show price for our shows. That, and we've actually got a couple people that call us from you know the promoters are like. How are you able to do this? And believe it or not, we have, and we've been told now, that we have the lowest show price for cars to get in in the country. To get into Motor Mania for a full day, bring your show car in, because I will say this, and, and Jess and I agree upon this 100%, if you do not have the show cars, you do not have a show. So our show car entry fee is only $5 to get your car in. Oh, that is, yeah, that is the lowest I've ever heard. And you can bring your car in for five bucks. Your whoever's sitting next to you is only eight dollars. It's eight dollar general admission, but that that admission gets you in. Your car is in for the day. Your the admission and general admission. If you just come in for public to watch a show, it's only eight dollars. Eight dollars gets you. There is no certain roped off areas you got to pay more to see. You can you get full walk of both fifty thousand square foot. You know the, the indoor showcase. The burnout pit, the street drags, all the bands, all the food vendors. It's only eight dollars to be there for the whole day, and it's we're telling we're people are telling us it's, it's the lowest price show across the country right now. But why? Why should it be any more? Why? <laughs> in what we're going on, and we won't jump in that whole political genre. I'll keep make sure Jess stays off here because we're on a tangent. <laughs> um, it's it's hard enough look at how much money these these men and women and families have into their cars their trucks their bikes whatever they're building i mean this is their passion what they're doing so why would you try to charge them 15 and 20 sometimes 100 bucks to be inside an indoor showcase when these are the people that make your show if you don't have these cars and trucks and vehicles you don't have a show exactly so give something back to them give them whatever you can and we try to treat our celebrities and everybody who's coming in with utmost respect and, um, and, and just have a lot of fun with it all. And it's, I think that's the big, biggest thing where Motor Mania has grown a lot. And we're in it for, we're in it for the community and the, and, the, and the culture and everything. And, you know, we're building a brand, no doubt about it. Um, but it's, it's just a lot of fun. And we're, we're always want to say, even my first commercials, I had my two daughters in the end of the commercial. We had a full Motor Mania commercial. In the end, I had the girls simultaneously say, and don't forget the kids in all my commercials. We do it every year. And what we mean is bring your kids out. Let them have fun. They get to sit in race cars, monster trucks, burnout cars. Um, they get to see pinstripers and, and all these other great things. And now we've even added the hot wheels. We couldn't do it for the last two years because of COVID and whatnot. But we made a couple of Hot Wheels racetracks that are 16 feet long. And we call it the Hot Wheels Challenge. And we give away Hot Wheels cars. And these kids play on there. And. Now we have slot car drags, and these these guys come in. They're on the slot car drags, and they give charities to Children's Hospital. So 
there's so much going on here now. It's just it it like I said, it gets bigger by the hour now. It really does for people that want to get involved. And that absolutely sounds like you're getting the entire community involved. I mean, not just bringing together a bunch of different car genres, but, you know, cultures behind it as well. And then to be, you know, family oriented and all that. Absolutely, you know, what we're about, you know, 100%. We love seeing shows like that up and coming. And we absolutely love seeing the fact that people are digging that a lot more as well. You know, I, I love the aspect of being, you know, Sam and I have a little one. We, you know, we like when we go out to the car shows and she's welcome at, you know, to sit in people's cars and take pictures with people's cars. And, you know, she loves that. That's her favorite thing to do. She, you know, ever since, you know, I, uh, she was three years old and going to car shows, you know, she would walk up to a car and turn around and, you know, instantly tell her mom cheese, you know, she wants pictures taken. Right. You know, so, uh, family oriented car shows such as that and getting them involved as well like you said you know doing stuff with the hot wheels and everything like that very cool uh you know we love that aspect of it as well so i i think what y'all are doing is amazing and and i'm i'm so stoked that you you came onto the show with us and you know wanted to tell us what what y'all have got going on in wisconsin in june is we're excited about it well, we hope you can come on up and, you know, one big thing I always want to give a shout out to not only, you know, of course, Jess here that always is, you know, puts up with all my crazy ideas and everything with me 24 seven, but I could not do this. I could not do motor mania and I could not do the life that I lead without, of course, great sponsors, backers, friends, workers, and everybody who supports what I've done and started. And, you know, you have some that come and go, but some that are always true to the, to the brand and what they want to do in the lifestyle. And, We've got so many great supporters, not only here in our, our hometown here um, in Jackson, West Bend area and Washington County, but everybody that's just been part of it. You know, a lot of people weren't real thrilled with it when I first started it, but now now they're on board and you just got to give props to people that help you out. And we have so many great volunteers that come in every single year that we have workers that come in definitely, but so many people just want to volunteer and get a shirt and do whatever and say, hey, I'll help you do this and um, race teams. And, you know, my buddy Scott Finko, He's a 20-year veteran of NASCAR uh, race car safety teams, and he volunteered himself uh, and, and all his, without even getting paid, he volunteered himself to be the safety team for the burnout pit and the drags to bring his whole safety team on board and the fire departments. And it's just, they want to see something great happen again. And now the other thing that I'm blessed with is we've got a couple other guys. They're calling for us to do motor mini in other, in other states, and which is amazing to me that, we, you know, a couple guys wanted us to bring it down to Florida or, you know, in California. And it's just, it's something I never even dreamed about doing before, but now we're actually visiting places to look at. So we don't know where it's going to go next. Wow. That'd be really cool. We end up having a show to take it on the road. I, that absolutely cool. That yeah. would be the next, uh, autorama. I'll, I'll put it out there. <laughs> yeah. And, well, it, it's funny. You said that cause that's exactly what Dale told me last winter. He said, <laughs> he said, he said, we have the winter shows. He goes, you could take Motor Mania and do the summer shows. He goes, because nobody is doing what you're doing with uh, bringing motorized events together with the, um, at, a, at a fairgrounds rather than a racetrack. And he said it's, and, and it's very budget orientated for everybody. Hey, it sounds like you've got you know something that's really got a lot of potential. It, it's already huge. You know, but yeah. it still has potential to grow even more. I think that's amazing, man. Yeah, we're we're we, we don't know where it's going to go to next. We've got a lot of a lot of crazy uh, media offers and everything else. So we're just going to keep riding out, and everybody who wants to get on board, we're going to keep doing it. So, but Hell, no, thanks for having us on the show and, and everything. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, uh, we talked so uh, easily here on this show, so like the conversation just flowed very well. If you ever want to be back on the show and give more stories about how Jess wants people to stop telling you that they saw you on Facebook, we want that to be on uh, a regular thing. That would be amazing. Oh, I, I mean, if you want, we can we can tune in this weekend and Jess can take over and she can talk for an hour about how she doesn't like that part. <laughs> she has lots and lots of material of, uh, you know, she's got... 
she's got some good stories. We've got some other, you know, business adventures that her and I are doing with, uh, you know, building a kit car and some other stuff. But she'll tell you, she's got some good stories about how, uh, you know, for instance, we're at a, we're, we'll finish up with this one real quick about the lady who, uh, we went to go interview her for her father's creation of a. About the shoes. Yes, I love this. I love this story. This is amazing. <laughs> we went to go do a video of a. A dad made a kit car. It's called a uh, Talbalago. Talbalago. Um One of the the you know these cars are there's only like 13 of them made in the, in the world and they're like 13 million dollars and this guy made a he made a kit car blah 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 and this the daughter called me up and Jess said what's the word enamored enamored. She kept saying she was enamored with me. Like she had totally. She would always bat her eyes at me and all this other stuff. And I'm like, whatever. I'm like, it doesn't matter, you know. And I'm like, I said she just wants me to do it for her dad, the story for her dad, so I'd come and interview him, you know. And so we went out there. <laughs> Jess dressed up because she was going to be on video, and you know, she was well, not dressed up, just got, you know, but did her hair and everything, and she was going to be in the video with me, asking the dad the questions and the full interview for our media channel and. We go out there, and I just had a pair of work boots on, jeans, and my Texaco jacket, you know, and what I do. And I'm sporting these super cute heeled boots with, like, leather straps. They're brand new, never warm, and they're so cute and kick-ass. It's, I can't even talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're outside. The cameras are on us, and we're just about to go in, and this lady comes up. And Jess and I are standing together, and I'm just doing this whole thing, you know. Hey, I'm John Bagley here with Motor Mania Media. We're just out here looking at this car, just about to do my intro. And this lady comes up. She's like, oh, my gosh, I just love your boots. No, yeah, or I love your shoes. I love your shoes. And Jess, of course. My dumb ass was like, well, thank you. Because, like, who else would she be talking to, right? <laughs> and she goes, and what did she say? She goes, no, actually, I was talking about his. He's wearing, like. $40 Walmart boots. Wow. And I was like, this has scarred me for life, you guys. I never assume now anybody is talking to me when they compliment us. I'm like, do you mean me or him? Him, me, me, him, her, who? <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. I was like, everybody has their own opinion. I guess uh, my egotistical ass will shut up and I won't say anything. But awesome. my boots were cute. That <laughs> happened to us once with our hair and I was so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> they're like man that's some really cool hair and i was like thank you they're like oh well yours is nice too but i was talking about his i was like you know what i'm leaving i don't even care anymore <laughs> it's it it literally scarred her for the day she was yeah she didn't want to look at this woman anymore she's like she can go eat shit <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone compliments me i'm like are you me me are you talking to me because like now i just don't want to assume i don't want to yep. i mean i I'm just, a, you know, I'm just probably just like you, you know, I'm just a guy, I'm just a guy wearing a t-shirt, a flannel, a pair of jeans and a work boots. And that's all I've been, I've always uh, ever been since I've been a kid. And when somebody said <laughs> you get nice shoes, I couldn't even, I literally took me 15 minutes to start doing the interview again. Cause I was laughing every time I started doing the introduction <laughs> and, and I kept giving her shit. And I'm like, yeah, this is John and Jess are over here. And oh, by the way, you guys like my boots. And I would do it like I would do it like five minutes. And she's like, I'm gonna kill you. I can't even do this anymore. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I got to. Oh, that is hilarious. Yeah, no, uh, I I have gotten to where I don't uh, I don't try to do much anymore because it, it will scar Sam for sure if I get a compliment and she does not. Oh bullshit! Oh, oh bullshit! <laughs> I just don't like. I just don't like when they're like, "Oh, oh, that's cool." I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah," and then they're just like, "All right, bye." I'm like, "What the fuck?" Like, I'm right here too. <laughs> like, we have the same damn hair color. You can tell me I look nice, Jesus. I was just embarrassed. It was my embarrassment talking. Exactly. That, that well, what I'll do, what I'll do is, um, we can. We can get together, um, you know, and whenever you guys want to have us on, I've got a million stories all the time, and Jess has got stuff we can always tell. If you, you know, even if you want to touch base next week as I'm getting closer to the show, whatever you want to do to help out all, all, all of our networking, social medias, I'm there for it, you know? Absolutely. No, yeah, and, yeah we, we have absolutely enjoyed having y'all on the show, and, you know, it's been very entertaining, I'm sure, for our, our listeners, but we can let them get back to their normal daily lives. Folks, if you're listening to this on Apple, please go and leave a rating and a review, and if you're listening to this on Spotify, you can do the same thing, and... As always, stay wild. <laughs>